Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I like pressed the button or if I didn't press the button. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take these off because I turned off the music. Um, and I was gonna kind of do some more. I'm gonna call it. I have the the blog is called Unpacking Work. So if you want to know what I've been working on, I'm I'm just putting everything there. But that's not the point. Um, today I want to talk about the feelings wheel for a second because I feel like um, a lot of, okay, everyone obviously is unpacking this right now. And there are people who are just hyper offended about the slap and they are just super empathetic with um, Chris Rock and they feel like, I don't know, like he, you know, it's okay to tell jokes. And it is like, you. I think a lot of the comedians specifically are upset because they're like, well, now we can't tell any jokes because we have to be fearful that people will slap us. And it's kind of like, that's always existed. Like, you can't just say, this is what I mean. People always say things like, oh, you know, it's just like, there's a difference between like words and physical violence. And then people's, except now all of a sudden then, okay, so if things are just words, then why is everybody getting mad when we're talking about Karen this, Karen that, Karen over here, Karen over there? Oh, everybody's in their feelings now. Oh, oh, you can't say Karen anymore. Wait, I thought it was just words, though. But why are we not supposed to care about feelings? Are they words or is it more? And, like, this is, like, the one time. Well, it's not the one time. There have been other times, too. But I'm just saying, like, for our community, this was a point where we see a literal black adult male having fucking enough and that family has been bullied for quite some time like <coughs> as much as we you know are criticizing kanye west even kanye west has been critical of willow smith who's a fucking teenager you know talking about her sexuality and now he doesn't want his daughter singing her song it's just like everybody's gonna have an opinion but he'd had enough i mean he'd been come on like the joke was insensitive it wasn't funny and also jada was hurt the the point here is that like it's not really will's responsibility to look out for chris rock right like chris rock is a whole ass adult male he's on his own it is will's responsibility to look after jada jada is his wife now i'm just saying and i've been saying this like a lot of y'all just don't give a shit about black women and our feelings at all so now you come across one man who does and it's a problem for everybody oh my god like leonardo dicaprio steps in who the fuck asked him like step out sir this has nothing to do with you like nobody gives a shit how you feel like this is so far removed from what like you shouldn't have no opinions like shut the fuck up before he gets slapped too like everybody can get slapped it's just it's a lot like it's, it's just kind of like if you you like nobody can feel his feelings and that's how he felt and like real words and feelings it's here's the here's the steps it's like feelings words actions okay there is that's why we have a certain thing as like violent words right like nigger that's one of them that's why you don't see white men out here talking about nigger this nigger that because enough of them have gotten jumped and beat the fuck up that they don't want to die no more. So they stop saying the word. Some don't, though. Don't get me wrong. Some stay in little white circles and they'll say it all day. Like the Chinese girl in Team Vogue, she said it. She didn't say it around no black people. She said it around other Asian people, right? That's what they do. They go in their little safe groups and then they talk their shit. But then you talk big shit in front of like, see, it would be different. Like, this is so what mostly happens in society is like the Chris Rocks with the insensitive jokes. They say it to Jada, who just, he, she just took it. You see, like, she she was, she was didn't go up there and do the slap herself. She just took the insult. And she was, like, she was about to, like, she was really hurt by it. She was really hurt by it. Everyone else can have, be like, oh, it's not that big a deal. The, the point is, though, Jada was hurt by it. So it doesn't matter how any of us feel. In Jada's mind, she was hurt. In Will's mind, being the protector of her, he's like, oh, hell no, this man just hurt the feelings of my wife. And then he got the fuck up and did something about it. Now this nigga's hurt too. His face is mighty red. That slap was hard. Everybody saw that jaw drop back. Whoop. Like, now everybody gets hurt. You see how that works? It's called ret a retaliation circle. So yes, people want to say, oh, physical violence is not that bad. Oh, words aren't that bad. Oh, words are not violence and all this shit. But who, like, some of y'all really need to be accountable. Go be accountable. Dear white people, go be accountable for Joe Rogan's words. Okay, those are words of violence that y'all were condoning for seasons. 
so that's just like one example and honestly it's a poor example because like we have way better ones of white people being awful but that's just like the most recent one right like if you want to really have some actions and opinions leonardo dicaprio go talk to joe rogan he's on your team whitey like go talk to him and then be like oh my god joe you hurt a whole community of black people maybe i should say something but no he wants to say something after a fucking slap that has nothing to do with them this is what i'm saying like stick your nose in your own business you see like where is leonardo's like corner corner of things that he should have an opinion about other white males other white cis males who are talking shit and being awful to other people that's where leonardo should stick his nose right like black men doing shit with their black wives has nothing to do with him he should probably mind his own fucking business and clearly i'm the only one who's gonna say it so i'll say it like nobody's minding karen's business maybe he should go mind it you know what i'm saying like it just it's a lot and and i think this is where i'm talking about this is this is what i mean when i'm saying like black culture is pop culture is american culture how is this on the, the front page of the new york times like a will smith slap it's on the front page. like you i'm sorry but it was like hilarious to listen to Abin preach this morning they're like bro ukrainian women are being blown the fuck up and we're talking about the will smith slap like damn this country would be nothing without us like they, literally the will, will smith is the number one trending topic in the country right now ukrainian women are being blown to smithereens just like still fuck them let's talk about the slap like really i'm sorry but that's like that's fucked up there is a real war happening and real people are dying maybe you should stick your energy there white people because like your own race is being like killed maybe go mind that business all i'm saying is finally like there well not finally because there's always been shit to talk about in this community i was like you'll see like the males in this community and i'm not trying to even be funny but there's a place for cis males too like 50 cent coming with a, a it was a very appropriate 50 cent tweet which is like chris rock smoking the crack rock after like after this laugh i'm so <laughs> you can always count on 50 cent to come with the jokes at the appropriate time i can't i think this was like last year i don't people brushed over it but i swear i saved the tweet and bookmarked it because it was so funny it was like some event and like julia roberts was like out right but she's kind of old now right so he saw the picture of her and i don't he didn't even recognize her and he called her like the witch from the wizard of oz or something he captioned it and he put the pictures right next to each other it was just like so fucked up but it was also so funny like it was just like <laughs> He was like, who is married to this? This bitch looks like the witch, the wicked witch of the wild, wild west. I, I'll find the tweet and I'll insert it here. It was just like, wow. At all the times, like you can count on certain people to come with the commentary and 50 Cent is one of them. Quavo is another who came. Uh, Little Rubio had a whole biblical section this morning. It was, I just, I can't like it. Well, I, I mean, I can, clearly I am. But I'm just saying, like, you see how, like, th this is a society, right? Like, and there's just, the incident was between two people. The rest of us really shouldn't, well, maybe more. Like, I feel like it was, Jada is probably a pretty important figure in this. But really, a lot of people shouldn't give a shit about, like, in all honesty, a lot of people shouldn't give a shit about what happened because, like, it's just none of our business. And also the academy, I think he he did actually leave the building after the slap because he realized like it was assault. Like he knew what he did was wrong. He left the building. It just so happened that he also won the award right after leaving the building. So he was escorted out and then escorted back in. <laughs> like the whole thing is just hilarious. Like it's it's just layered and also it's just the, the timing of it is so fucking funny like it's just it's funny it's funny and i think like i'm not i think also maybe let, let's let, i'm going to continue the conversation from the last post where i started to talk about like how the people who are working in florida right now the lgbtqia people who are working at disney right now the dehumanization that they must be feeling in that office right and this is so it's not like directly it's not like the ceo directly said fuck the faggots in my office like he didn't say that all he said was i think he was in support of the bill which is don't say gay 
But do you see the chain effects of that? Like, there are people who are in support of that bill, and they realize, or people who are opposed to that bill, and they realize that he is senior management, he is leadership, and he is in support of that bill, which kind of means that he is in opposition to their personhood. So in this same way, this is how people are being like affected in their like personhood in a sense where they see like what Will Smith did, but also there are people who are in support of Will Smith's like personhood in this case, especially like black males who might have been like dehumanized for a while and emasculated, right? They saw, and I feel like Drake, as a father now, if you saw his tweet, he posted a tweet or a, um, a, a snap, a Insta vid, an Insta story of Will Smith as um, Aladdin with the little crown, and it was like, ha, 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 I am master. Like, that is what, <laughs> that was his sentiment, like, right after he saw this lab. I, go read the the Quavo tweets I thought were really good too where he gives a sentiment about like if someone had something to say about his wife he probably would have smacked them up too this is what I'm saying where like not, I, I don't feel like I'm actually the one saying it I'm just trying to explain because everyone is sitting in their little echo chambers where they feel like they understand specifically like the black community because they'll have like one piece of representation like for instance i think lena waith is a good example of this like lena waith does not recommend she doesn't even represent she represents like one percent of black female america that is such a small percent like nobody lives the, like uh, most people cannot relate to lena waith stories and they keep pushing lena waith stories into the black community as as if we're going to relate to her nobody relates like she is not telling stories for any of us she's just telling her own story to the one percent of other black gay women who relate to her and i'm not saying that those people don't deserve a story i'm just saying when we're talking about ethnic groups and she represents one percent of the population that's ridiculous. Like, why wouldn't you make a show that would represent 90% of a population? Like, how many people in the black community relate to Insecure? Like, everybody watches Insecure. It's like, nobody is confused. Like, Insecure is telling more of a story that is representative of the black community, and Lena Waithe is not. That's it. Like, you, you, can't, you, can, you can't, like, make other shit up like something else is happening. Like, she doesn't represent this community. In the same way, I feel like other, like, Will Smith getting up, and also if you realize, Will Smith had an entire conversation with Denzel Washington because they're both black, cis, straight males who have been working for a very long time in entertainment with their black-ass families and their black-ass wives. Like, they have some commonality there. And there, there was also, I think, Bradley Cooper who went up to Will Smith and empathized, and empathized with his sentiment. I'm saying, like, there are some people who are criticizing what happened. There are other people who are in support of it for certain reasons. Like, you cannot emasculate a male in, 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 in terms of his wife, in terms of his family, and then just think it's going to be okay. And this is what I was saying yesterday. Like, respect is actually very important in the black community. If you are not a member of the black community, maybe this doesn't apply to you but you that doesn't change the fact or if you're not aware of it or if you don't care that still has nothing to do with the like cultural norms of this community i really like jason lee's take and it was my take yesterday too of calling him philly will right like philly will came out like will smith is not hollywood like he grew up in fucking philadelphia for real for real like he was like that dude at the basketball courts who knows all the people from the block like y'all don't do y'all not know the stories of jazzy jeff who is still his like homie when they were making like rap songs and shit like we can think of will smith as like you know the whatever hollywood movie that he did but y'all see y'all made him mad this nigga got slapped up now like just i mean you can watch that shit slow motion like it was so honest. It was so honest. It was like, that's some shit that would happen in real life. Like, I for real seen that happen. Yep. Like, that, that, yes. Like, nobody was surprised. It was like, yeah. And then he, like, went back to his seat and explained it. That's what I'm, so there was no confusion. Like, and th this, th this is the point, though. Like, no, every person in the black community, okay, so let me, like, go back to explaining this. I am literally quoting here from Jason Lee, who said, um, 
Some of y'all are mad because Will Smith, as a black male, stood up for his family and your black ass family didn't do that for you. And so now you're mad. And you, you know what? Be mad. But like, that's what happened. Like when you actually love your family, you really do try to protect them. You try to support them. You try to make sure they're safe, which is why like you see Jada and Will making all of this space for a new culture of black kids who are coming up to make space for their own fucking children. Like they're like talking about all these issues that are impacting their children because they want the society to be better for their family, which makes fucking sense. But you can't be mad because nobody did that shit for you because your family is a loser. Like, that's why. Like, oh, well, yeah, nobody nobody slapped up for you, and that's too bad. They just, like, let people shit on you. That's too bad. Maybe you should have stood up for yourself. But don't you, you can't, like, knock somebody else for, like, being offended and being honest with their feelings. Because those, and this is another part where I, I just got to really commend Jason Lee for really breaking this down because we we have this is this is similar to Kanye's situation these are black males who are literally feeling their feelings in honest ways and society just isn't ready for it society's trying to police it and make it seem all these things they want to call Kanye mentally ill now they want to call Will Smith a violent a violence or whatever it's kind of like no like no no these are normal reactions. This shit happens. You can be mad. Maybe give him a citation. Don't invite him back. Whatever it is. But you can't say that, like, this is so abnormal, right? Like, Kanye West wanting to get back with his wife and being upset that Pete is, like, literally making fun of the fact that he's fucking his wife. Like, these are not, like, no. Th that is, those are very, like, normal reactions. These aren't, like, new things. I guess maybe we just haven't seen this. And in in, in we haven't seen characters in the black community play out these relations, but they're not new. The situations aren't new. Maybe it's just the first time in reality we've seen it happen in a black body. This is another reason why I feel like it's just hyper important for me to continue to show up and just say something, just really show up. It's not like, I don't, I'm not trying to do any activism at this point. I'm just showing up to let you guys know that I'm, I'm here, right? Because that's an, I, I was here before, but like what I was trying to do is just be, because it's really uncomfortable. I, I realize how uncomfortable it is for a lot of you who don't understand black people like me. You're confused because you're like, no, she can't exist. She can't exist. No, I do. I do. And all the shit that I tweeted, I said it. And I know you don't like it and you were, it was mean to you because you thought everybody was supposed to be nice to you, even though like you weren't nice to anyone. And then here's another thing. I'm going to bring up a point that ABBA made. Preach objected, but I do want to just say it because in the same way that like Jon Stewart is trying to have all these conversations, oh, like let's fix white people and like, okay, let's dismantle racism among white people. Let's identify it. That's good for the white community, but I just don't think like some of y'all understand that like in the same way that some white people do not see black people as humans, there are quite a lot of people. I would probably say like 75% of the black community doesn't even see white people as humans because all they've seen for like their entire lives is like active white racism on TV in terms of like religion and movies in reality so all they know are like shady white people and all that's been happening is people have been having discussions internally with their families with their friends about how shitty this other race is so this is what i've been saying like why cross cross-cultural communication is really important it's not happening right now like it's not happening at all we could all wish and we could all pretend and we can all fake and we can all hypothesize and shit but the reality is everybody is really comfortable in their little groups where everybody agrees and they're like here's the consensus on how we all feel so it's like three people who feel that way who are all the same probably the same ethnicity like all three biracials feel the same all three somalians feel the same all three ethiopians feel the same all three irish people all three russians right everybody in their separate groups has all agreed on a one consensus and one frame of mind but nobody is like crossing over where they're being like Ooh, let me go from this group of Somalians to this group of Germans and just talk about this opinion that might not be 
like the status quo or like even let's work with somebody who's even kind of different so that maybe we could learn a bit about culture and family like nobody's doing that and so now here here we have it right where abba just said it he was like he was made he made a joke because he was like damn the ukrainians are being blown the fuck up we should care now nah, we about to talk about the will smith slap and it's just like and so he made a joke about that and the joke continued where he was like yeah i mean the black community doesn't see white people as humans anyway so it doesn't matter and then preach was coming back with it. he's like well i think it's the other way i think it's the white people who don't see the black people as humans and i'm here to say it's both ways <laughs> both things are true at the same time both groups have actively dehumanized each other and do not see each other as humans. That's where we are in 2022. Everyone can have their opinions about multiculturalism and like, you know, integration and progressivism, whatever, but like actually look outside, like for real. Go look at your job, where you work, where you live. Is it progressive? Is it? No, it's not. It's not. It's not. And like I'm I'm not going to change it. I'm this all I'm trying to do is just be here as a moment in time, right? For another black girl who's going to come up and who's going to be the next Olivia. I'm going to tell you how these are the survival tactics. See, you have to, the next girl who's watching me, what you have to do is you have to get your camera and you have to talk about what you see. Because it's going to be different. You can't, you can't just repeat what I say. You have to now start talking from your perspective and look out into the, your world because you're going to be younger than me or maybe you're older than me. You're different than me in some way, right? Like I'm in Oakland right now. I'm at Lake Merritt. It's 2022. You're somewhere else. And the culture is different there. Like your socioeconomic status is different. You went to a different school. You have a different job. We're not the same. You see what I'm saying? So it's important for you to go out and to, to like to showcase, to talk about the shit that you see so that the next girl coming behind you can be influenced by you and can change it. I can't be the only one. It's, I'm, I feel bad that I am the only one. Richard, this is, this is why I wanted to go silent. And I was like, I don't want to say anything. It just feels so strange to do the activism work of just existing, which is like such a problem for so many fucking other people. Like, it's not my responsibility to show other cultures how to humanize black women or black people. Like, it's, it can't be my responsibility alone. Like, y'all have to go live too. And you have to live like in respective of me. I'm gonna make my own mistakes. I'm gonna do what the fuck I wanna do. As y'all see, like I'm not taking clues or hints from nobody. I do what I wanna do. I say what I wanna say. It's a problem for some people, but at this point I can't give a shit. Like I can't live for the other people. I can only live for me. Just in the same way that you have to go live for you. And if like, if we're being real, Will Smith has to live for him and now, this is going to be another great example of, um, I don't know, like Chris Rock in a sense reclaiming his manhood. I think Diddy said it well. He was like, damn, shit happens, but it couldn't have been me. Because like, if that was Diddy up there, they would have been fighting for show on national television. It would have been a whole ass fight. Only Chris Rock has the, uh, I don't even, what do you call it? Like, um, strength, I suppose, to not fight back. Because it couldn't have been me either. Uh, you know, it's like a, a lot a lot of people can say a lot of things Saying shit is different from doing shit Once somebody active once the hand hits the face It is you have opened the bag of like we fighting you, you feel me like words can say a lot That's another thing. I think um, and I'm not sure if this was if this was intentional, but when I was out with um She's like a new friend, right? And she, she, like, based, she was, she was asking for a fight, right? Well, she wasn't. She actually no, she wasn't asking for it. Uh, some a girl came up to her and slapped her, but then she like runs up to the girl like, "Why did you do that?" And when she did that, I, I don't, I can't even blame her. Like, she wasn't wrong for doing that, but I think in a way, she wasn't wrong for doing that. She was trying to protect herself, but it was just, it was a group. She was running into a gang at that point because it was six other girls around around that one girl who slapped her and she just she just ran into it 
and I, I like I'm I'm not gonna also run into a gang like that's maybe that's a lot about just street culture and where it's not even street culture no more this is like normal culture uh, who else made a point about this oh it was T Noir who was like who was talking about I don't think a lot of y'all parents realize like these kids have grown up on world star hip hop as soon as you gave them a cell phone they were on world star hip hop watching fights every day every day these kids have been watching fights and it's not just it's not just uh white people not just black people fighting on world, world star hip hop all the groups are fighting you see latino kids fighting on world star hip hop you see white kids fighting on world star hip hop you see black kids fighting everybody is fighting they are dr mopping the floor are the words that you know are used on world star hip hop like shit is going down on that fucking site every day and these, that's what these kids have grown up on. We can say like TikTok is like the sanitized version of World Star, okay. Where after people watch World Star Hip Hop, then they get on TikTok. But it's the same people on both platforms. These people are in the same communities. It's World Star and TikTok. It's not like, and it's all the sites. It's Instagram, World Star, TikTok. Everyone on the same fucking platforms just choosing which they're sanitizing content and, ch and picking which one to put it on okay it's so like uh, as soon as you see a fight put it on world star as soon as you see a good photo put it on instagram if you got a dance put it on tiktok find whatever content is is appropriate for whichever platform and then push it to that platform but it's not different people if you uh, this is what's like super weird like y'all are only watching certain you're only following certain people so you have this idea like oh all the black kids are like this because all you see on world star for your algorithm is black people fighting on world star in reality it's everybody fighting on world star <laughs> in the same way like on instagram you could just follow some black influencers or content creators who are not posting violent videos or who are explaining shit like the many youtubers who are just who have been out here explaining shit but no y'all refuse to follow them and so you have like a warped view of society and then when y'all see actual respectability politics come to the forefront on television now all of a sudden you're so surprised and everybody wants to claim violence 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 no it's about respect it's not just violence it's layered but yeah